in Pyro's hangout yesterday, uh, among other things, we discussed um, the issue of the absoluteness of logic and why I simply cannot accept it. Um, the situation kind of got bogged down where it inevitably gets bogged down at this point when you're um, trying to explain a position that rejects logic. That's not something that goes down very well in Western civilization, to say that you don't accept at least the absoluteness of logic. I wasn't saying that I rejected logic, actually, but it was more that I accepted it provisionally, and that we must maintain that provisionality throughout. Um, there is a reason for this. I never quite got around to describing why, but I've drawn this flow chart here to explain why. Uh, I guess I should have probably numbered the um, the bits along the way, but it starts in the left hand side, goes over to the right, predictably enough, from the yellow to the green. And um, we start at uh, three axioms. The first axiom is intelligence exists and is measurable. The second axiom is race exists and humans are racially classifiable. The third axiom is, IQ testing is an accurate means of assessing intelligence. Now, I think that most people would more or less not have an issue with any of this um, at first glance. You would look at this and it all seems, pardon the word, axiomatic. Now, you take those three axioms and you apply that to real life. Um, you do some research. Uh, Box number four, research IQ tests are conducted on persons of a variety of races based upon the three axioms. Okay, seems good enough, but it's a bit weird because something in our society says you really shouldn't do that. However, um, let's put that aside and assume that somebody has done it, which <laughs> a lot of people actually have. So then, uh, box number five, analysis. The results of the research reveal a noticeably lower average IQ for persons of African ancestry and I'd say lower than, say, people of European or people of Asian uh, ancestry. Uh, and then, finally, the last box, box number six, conclusion, person, persons of Af African heritage are less intelligent than whites and Asians. Now, this line of reasoning has actually been pursued by a fellow by the name of J. Philippe Rushton. We've all heard of him. He's rather infamous, a Canadian um, university prof, I guess. Um, and he reveals, in a way that um, a lot of people have, he reveals just a sort of a flaw at the fundamental basis of our view of logic. We take axioms and we make them into facts. And this is the danger that can ensue from that. Now, we have two choices when we look at this kind of a dilemma. Um, by the way, I think that um, Benatar's asymmetry is similar to this. He takes certain things as axiomatic and then pushes them to conclusions that most people would find absurd. But um, given the way that we've, as a society, generally accept axioms as facts, um, it's not surprising that someone has done this. I, I was beginning to discuss uh, the fact that I'd argued with Marxists along this line. And Marxists, um, at, at least some kinds of Marxists, I guess you'd call them Marxist-Leninists or something like that, or some, you know, vaguely Stalinistic or something, where they would say, you know, society is divided into classes, the class struggle defines history, um, and the ultimate aim of history, the teleological historical necessity is to rid uh, human society of classes. And inevitably what you get is something resembling either the gulag or the killing fields. Uh, those are uh, three examples of this kind of sort of, I don't know, nebulous uh, logic where you, if you're not careful, when you begin at the beginning, like let's say that um, the yellow circle on the left-hand side is something that we all take for granted and it's gotten to the point where we simply don't question it anymore. Well, then by the time you get to the green, the process to go from the yellow to the green could take 10, 15, 20 years in someone's head and they may have actually changed their personality or changed their point of view or evolved in a certain way based upon assuming that certain things are absolute facts. To get them to go from the green back to the yellow is almost impossible in many cases because then they will start saying you're nothing but a solipsist. 
If you ask me, the fundamental, I would say, error that takes place is at the yellow, where you assume that axioms are facts. They are not. Um, the unfortunate um, corollary to failure to do that is that you get um, you get a situation like we have today concerning, say, the the issues raised in this flowchart, where anyone who does this kind of um, uh, research is simply denounced for having done so. Uh, J. Philippe Rushton was uh, denounced like you wouldn't believe throughout most of his professional life when he came out with all this stuff. And uh, that seems to be where the debate stands right now. You don't do this because we as a society disapprove of it and will sanction you for doing it. And it's a kind of a... It's almost like a, a sort of vision of thought crime. You simply can't go there. This is forbidden uh, research to do. I say, no, it's not forbidden, but you need to have courage to actually take this apart. And what you have to do is you have to admit at the beginning that your three axioms are just axioms. And those axioms are not facts. We can accept these things axiomatically, but once we get to, say, the green part where we conclude that persons of African heritage are less intelligent than whites and Asians, we can either accept that, we can denounce whoever did the research for having done it, having opened that Pandora's box, or we can simply say, ah, now it's time to go back to the yellow circle, start all over again, and reinvent the wheel. Simply because some people, either by design or um, simply by carelessness or by failure to actually differentiate between an axiom and a fact, uh, haven't bothered to do this. And as I say, this, this kind of thinking, this kind of acceptance of axioms as facts has wormed its way right into our very way of thinking as a civilization. My way is to go back to the yellow part and say, axiom, intelligence exists and is measurable. This is an axiom, not a fact. And you remind yourself at each step along the way that this is an axiom. By the time you get to the green and you conclude this, you say, okay, persons of African heritage are less intelligent than whites and Asians. You can then, with a certain degree of, what would I call it, confidence or a certain lack of disorientation, go back to the yellow part um, without actually getting into that frustrating sense of disorientation and, and neo-solipsism, I guess, um, where your system has been flexible enough from the beginning that you can revisit from the green all the way back to the yellow relatively easily. This is not to say that axioms are not to be used, but we've got to remember what axioms are. Axioms are a tool to enable us to do certain things. We get axioms as a point of departure for a certain series of, I would say, cognitions, or in this case, researches, to determine certain things. Now, in my scenario, we could do all of this research and not worry about it, and by the time we get to the green, we can then go back to the yellow and say, okay, now we've reached some sort of, I won't say a cul-de-sac, because, again, it's treated as a cul-de-sac by our society, uh, but I would say, no, no, we've just gotten to somewhere that is, uh, has the potential of having a negative impact on our society. Uh, it seems to be somewhat axiomatic <laughs> in our society that all races are equal. And that even if we do accept races uh, as existent, it's just a question of appearance or something like that. Um, so we can talk about black people, we can talk about Asian people, we can talk about white people without really worrying about generalizing about them in, in, in nefarious ways or ways that have invidious uh, implications. Uh, because again, if you get to green, you don't like what you see, you can then go back to yellow. It's not uh, as though you've actually boxed yourself in, which in my opinion, the Western scientific way of looking at things, or at least the logical way of looking at things, has a tendency to do. Um, this type of thinking, when you always remind yourself each and every step along the way, maybe, maybe, axiomatically yes, but axioms are not facts, you are much less likely to uh, get stuck the way that, say, this particular issue, i.e., the what's 
colloquially known as race realism, um, has done. It's pushed Western science towards the green, towards that conclusion, while forgetting the fact that intelligence exists and is measurable is an axiom. Race and a humans, uh, race exists, and humans are racially classifiable. That too is an axiom, and that IQ testing is an accurate means of assessing intelligence. Those are just axioms. So we don't really, we, we can back off from the green without compromising everything that we've done all along if we have, as I say, a methodology that insists when, from the very beginning that we continually remind ourselves that there is a difference between an axiom and a fact. This is not to say that we cannot deal with axioms or deal in axioms. What it means is we must always remember what axioms are. I hope this clarifies what we discussed.